Hey there, everybody, and welcome to another Alchemy Guide. Today, we're going to be talking about dice pool actions and how to create them and how to use them in game. So if you go over to creating a new action, you'll give the same you'll get the same options like putting in an image for the action uh, and also naming it. But we're going to go ahead and activate the dice pool option. Now, of course, you can add a description to this one and you can even label what this dice pool is specifically. For instance, hunger, gear, artifact, hit dice, whatever you want it to be called. This is where we get into a little bit of the, the innards of the action itself. So here you can ask it to use an attribute and or skill to determine the number of dice rolled. So by attaching a, an attribute or a skill to it, it may add the number of dice rolled in that pool. Now, for instance, we're using Vasin here, so it's going to use the Vasin D6 in order to do that. You can also add a bonus if you'd like. You can turn this off if you'd like and just tell it, hey, I want you to roll this many Vasin D6s. And you know what? We're going to give it a bonus of two. So it always adds two on top of that. You can turn it on or off however you'd like to describe how many dice you'd like to roll. Now, with that being said, you can also determine how many uh, or the target number that it's trying to reach. So determine success based on a target number or threshold. If you turn that on, it'll give you some other options. Now, some games will tell you if you are successful if you reach this, if you're under it or if you're over it or if you are under or equal to or over or equal to. Those are the different success uh, determinations. Uh, or, or success values that you need to reach in order for it to say, yes, okay, you are successful in making this roll. We give you all those options to choose from. So that way, whenever it does roll, it tells you, okay, yes, you rolled uh, under or equal to the number you were supposed to. And boom, there you go. It will say success. Now, of course, you can add any attributes or skills attached to it to say, we want it to be under or equal to our physique. Uh, and under or equal to our physique plus force, um, something like that. Anyways, basically it's saying here is what the number we want to roll under and or equal to, and it will then say, yes, you are successful um, or you've reached your target number. Uh, additional success values means that if you uh, don't have a target number, um, you can select the number. Uh, so we're using a D6 specifically for Basin. You can select to say, hey, this is where the successes lie. So for Vasin specifically, D6s, when you roll, the only way you can succeed in Vasin is if you get a six on the die. So you roll dice until you get sixes or showing. But you have all these different options in creating whatever you want. So for instance, let's say for instance, uh, success values are on fives and sixes. And if you roll fives or sixes, it'll say, hey, you succeeded on this number of dice when you roll. If you leave this failure one blank, it won't show failures. It'll just say, say you succeeded this many times, even if you roll, let's say, a one, two or three or four. But if you want it to display failures or if you're like maybe there's a balance of how many failures you get versus uh, successes, you can say, for instance, uh, five and sixes are successes and then ones, twos, threes and fours are failures. Now, what's really neat is you can even state if you want uh, multiple successes or multiple failures. So for instance, um, if we rolled a D6 here and we got a six, if we select it twice, you'll see that it adds a little two next to it. That means it will count it as two successes when we roll a six. You can set that to however many you want. And you just say maybe even three successes when you roll a six. Same thing goes for failures. You can set double, triple, quadruple failures, whatever, when you roll a certain number. So for instance, if we rolled a one on this dice, it would count two failures. You can allow this die to be re-rolled and specify the value of the dice that can be re-rolled. So for instance, we can hit this re-roll button here and it will give us options to say, if we roll a one, two, three, or four, uh, let's take out the five. If we roll one, two, three, four, or uh, that's it, <laughs> um, you can then uh, push the roll. But if it's a five or a six, then it's not going to. Um, this basically uh, uh, states, you know, these numbers will re will re-roll. But if you roll a five or a six, then those numbers will stay the same and all the other numbers will re-roll. Then you have exploding dice. And I'm, if you know what exploding dice are, if you don't, basically it means that 
whenever the max value is rolled on the dice, it will explode. It will continue to roll again and again and again until the max value is not met. And then it will add all those bonuses or add all those dice up together for you. Or if it's showing successes or failures, it'll add the successes or failures to the roll. And then last here, we have the hide the total success and failures. So for instance, if you don't want it to show success and failures, you just want it to show maybe images to say like, you know, uh, the there was three dice visibly that you can see that succeeded. You don't need it to tell you that there was three successes underneath it. Uh, you can also hide that if you wish. Um, but giving you all these options allows you tons and tons of things that you can do with dice pools specifically. So as you can see, this custom action, this dice pool action, allows you to do a lot of different things with these dice pools. Um, you can create all kinds of stuff, including multiple successes and uh, exploding dice and rerolls and all that good stuff. So there's a lot of options in dice pools. Um, so use them however you'd like and create some awesome actions along the way. If you have any questions or anything like that, please leave them in the comments below. I appreciate you guys watching another Alchemy Guide, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, everybody.